My name's Kel Gallagher, and um, I've been talking for a while about doing a tutorial on HDR photography, and so I thought I'd sit down tonight and make one up. I'm using a little program on the Macintosh called I Show You, and it allows me to capture what I see on my screen and show you. So here we go. Um, when you buy a digital camera, that camera is trying to do one thing, and that's please you. So when you take a picture, it averages out the exposure. The darks that are too dark and the lights that are too light are all made to fit within the exposure. So you look at the picture and go, that's a good picture. The problem is that image is losing a lot of its darks and its lights. It's just kind of flat. So with high dynamic range photography, we take multiple exposures of the same object in registration i.e. On, on a tripod or something like that. And we combine those images in software to give us a much more dynamic look or uh, give us a much more, uh, to give us a wider latitude of exposure. So, as you can see, this is all the same image here. And the image on the left is two stops underexposed. This image here is uh, one stop underexposed. This image right in the center is two stops overexposed, and then this is one stop overexposed. And then this image over here is what the camera averaged out as a good exposure. So, uh, for those of you who are wondering, I'm on a, uh, an Apple, and I'm in the program right now called Aperture 2. I'm going to select all of these images, and I'm going to export them in their master form, which they all were shot in RAW on a uh, Nikon D3 and I'm going to make a folder on my desktop called HDR and then Beach and we're going to create that and then we're going to export these files alright now I'm going to quit out of Aperture and we're going to go into a program called Photomatix Pro and you can download this on the internet I think it's like $99 and it's a pretty useful program. Although Photoshop will do HDR for you, uh, Photomax Pro kind of goes the extra, uh, extra mile or, or probably the extra 10 miles and makes it a lot easier. Um, so we're going to generate an HDR and we're going to look for the files and there they are in our HDR beach folder and I'm going to select all five of them. Alright, now Basically, it's asked me, do I, want to, do I want to generate an HDR? Yep, I do. So, here we go. Now, this second box comes up here, and I've not changed the settings very much. These are pretty much the factory defaults because I'm not done with this image once it's processed by Photomatix Pro. It's just kind of a stepping stone for Photoshop. It kind of speeds the process up for me. So, I click Generate the HDR, and the first image you're going to see is... Uh, going to be kind of goofy looking. It's a unprocessed HDR image. That's It's not really tone mapped yet. And uh, that word tone map is something you'll learn as, as you do more of these. Okay. Uh, I paused the software for a minute because it took my computer, I'm on a laptop here, it took my computer about uh, two minutes to do all the rendering to get this image to pop up. Now, you might be looking at this photograph going, ooh, what a cool photograph. Well, no, don't, because this is the untone mapped HDR. Basically, all this is, is this is kind of like the stuff that we're getting ready to toss out. Um, if you look at the box in the upper left-hand corner, I can move the mouse, and it shows in a uh, blown-up uh, form what my image is going to look like. And, you know, I, to be honest with you, I haven't found a lot of use for this. Um, what I usually do is go out... I go right ahead and click tone map and so now it's thinking and there's the tone map image now I'm going to set the defaults because these settings are what I used on the last image I, I retouched so I'm going to close this out here and this is the defaults now this is a, this here this here <laughs> this is a tone map tone mapped image um, so let's do a few adjustments on this before we export this to Photoshop for final retouching and um, you know, some folks stop at the end of Photomatix and they're happy, but I really think these need to go on to Photoshop 
and have the rest of the work done. But I'm going to move the strength up on uh, the, uh, the tone mapping to 100%. And now all this is just personal preference. You know, I'm in this big color phase right now. So if you don't like a lot of color, you can always dial back from these. But I'm going to bring up my color saturation quite a bit. And, you know, I'm about 76% there on color saturation, maybe a little bit less. Then I'm going to monkey around with the luminosity luminosity and uh, see where this ends up. Now you've got light smoothing here and this is like very low light smoothing and that looks like crap to me but I mean I see some folks posting images that look like that but I'm usually between very high and uh, high. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere but um, I think that I'm going to go with um, very high in this one and then let me just kind of tweak my micro, my micro contrast and this is something I usually go back and forth a few times on but I'll, I usually end up where it was uh, when I start it. Now I'm going to hit process. There's a bunch of other things here you know white point controls color settings but you know I'm going to do all this stuff in Photoshop so I'm going to go ahead and hit process. So uh, right now my laptop's processing the image and this may take a while uh, we'll see and um, once this is done we'll get into Photoshop and get into layers and make some masks and stuff like that now if anything I'm doing is confusing you just bear with me I'm gonna do a bunch more of these or you can always write me at um, Kel Gallagher at Mac.com okay there's our completed HDR